Now we're going to get into where production starts flowing into our schedule. So I've got our schedule open here. And if I pull this out to see, so far we don't have any quantity or weight information coming over. And we don't have any hours flowing over um, like, like we have indicated we could do. So what I'm going to do to start with, I have the um, our production control job linked to the project management job. When I go update status, then what you're going to find is that the weights start flowing over. Um, any production data starts flowing over as well as far as percent complete, which right now we haven't done any um, uh, work on the job yet. So there's 0% complete. But that would be flowing over as well for for these items. Um, now you see the base hours. Base hours is where we talked about. This is basically re-estimated hours. Now why do I not have anything there? So let me show you the setup for that to bring that over, and then we'll go into where that's coming from as well. So I'm going to go to our production control job, and if I hit edit here rather than going into the job, you're going to see that there's an estimate field here. Um, now I'm going to point this back to an estimate. Now, um, I'm going to go to that estimate. And actually, let me open that estimate up. I just want everybody to understand all the links and what they're for. If I go edit on that estimate, you'll see that it's linked to the project management job. Now, that pretty much gets reporting um, uh, from between estimate and actual. This right here gets us hours linked so that it can then flow into the schedule as well. So I'm going to save this right here. And what we're going to find when we do this, I'm going to go back over to the schedule. I'm going to update the status again. We'll see that hours start flowing into the project. And in fact, I'll open up the, the production control job here in just a second once it, once it finishes saving. And you'll see that we should have hours um, coming into the job from the estimate. And we'll get into where that, how, how that actually works and how we can manipulate that if we'd like to also here at the end of this video here. Um, okay, now that it has updated, I'm going to go into the project here. And you'll see right here now we've got hours flowing over into the schedule since, or actually into the production control job since I linked it back to an actual estimate. So I'm going to leave that open. I'm going to go back to our schedule here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to update, update status again. You should see the base hours flowing over here. All right, so we've updated again. And you see now base hours. Basically, it took those hours from the estimate, applied it to the actual material in production control, and I have essentially re-estimated hours here. Now, let's kind of take a look at this right here right now. So our original estimated hours for sequence one was 150 hours. The base hours says 165 hours which means that our plan is going to be 165 hours. That's what's going to be used over on the production schedule for sequence one is 165 since it is more hours than what our original estimated was. So now if we come down to sequence two, you see we've got 1,525 original estimated hours, 1,122 base. So it's going to use the original estimated and assume that we have more um, to come more material to come um, because we still don't we're not up to our original estimated hours um, same deal here with sequence three um, you'll see sequence four goes the other way again we've got 1100 estimated hours 1182 base so it's going to use 1182 in our production schedule now if these were 100 percent released I could go ahead and just change it to 100% right here, and then it will use the 1,122 hours. So if I get 100% released here, then you can see 1,122 hours is going to be used because it's, it's saying, okay, we don't have anything else to come. So that's the hours we're going to use. So think of it this way. The base hours is um, the re-estimated hours 
and that's really what you want to be using on your um, final production schedule or shop schedule um, so, because that's the actual work that will be going in the shop, not necessarily your original estimated hours. Now, where do these base hours come from? Let's, let's go look at that as well. I'm going to go back over to my production control job. And let's look and see where this is coming from. Um, obviously, we're linked to the estimate. You saw me do that. If I go production control, drop down, review, and then production codes. This is um, something that um, uh, many of you may not even have turned on or know about. The production codes, you can see right here, blank production code is 9.8 man hours per ton. Now I've done nothing with production codes whatsoever um, in either the estimate or in production in or in um, production control. So it's just using the man hours per ton multiplied times the weight of, of every piece and that's how it's getting this 5875 hours. Now I'm not going to do really in depth on production codes, but let me let me just talk a little bit about this and kind of illustrate a little. Let me go over to our estimate as well. You can um, you can go into maintenance production control and global production code maintenance and set up whatever production codes you want. You can do production codes on the fly as well. Um, and put in whatever you want for the production code. And you'll see this work in, in a minute. But um, these are the out-of-the-box ones. Um, so uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to use this as, a, uh, as an illustration here. So if you want to you know, get this a little bit more precise, rather than just using the flat man hours per ton, it makes a whole lot more sense. If, you, if sequence one was really heavy, labor-intensive material, whereas... Sequence two was light stuff. You don't want to use the same man hours per ton because you're going to get a warped picture there. It'd be better to say, hey, show me just that, you know, use a, a man hours per ton that is more realistic. And so you can do that. So I'm over here on the estimate here. And let's just say if I took, um, and you see here down here is a production code. And those are all those codes that we had. Let's just say that, um, let me set a filter here, see if I've got a category. Yeah, I've got columns. Um, so let's say that all of these columns here, I'm going to put a production code on it. Let me select all and go global edit, global edit selected. I'm going to put a production code on it. Um, where's my production code? Uh, da, 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 da. We'll put a production code on it of this C1. That, that was the column one. Um, and there's no sign, you know, there's no scientific def, definition of column one. It's whatever you want it to be, really. So I'm just going to say all of those are column one. So I've just applied that to all of these columns on this estimate. Now we're going to look at the global, um, or not the global, but we're going to look at the production codes on this estimate now to see what it figured four columns um, specifically as a man hours per ton as opposed to everything else. I think our overall was 9.8 or something like that. So now if I go to production codes in the estimate, you're going to see that columns are 9.94 man hours per ton and er everything else that's left is 8.94 man hours per ton. Um, so I could continue to do that with the estimate and apply it to like railing, which is going to be a totally different man hours per ton than columns, obviously. And I could go down through there and continue to do that. Now, how does this work? How does, how does this flow over into, um, into production control? We would need a corresponding, um, uh, application of this C1 production code over in production control in order for it to flow over. And let's go do that now. Let me go back into my production control job and I've got production code here as well. Let me just filter for all my columns here also. And let's go other fields, category, column. So um, select all of those. Let's global edit all of it. 
and let's go production code let's put on there rc1 come on now there's c1 so i'm going to apply that to all of the columns over in production control and what what will happen at that point is the higher man hours per ton will be applied to those columns whereas everything else that I haven't applied yet that it's going to have a blank production code is going to have the lower man hours per ton. I think it was eight, eight some odd man hours per ton for the blank production code and C1 is the nine hours. So let me look at that over here and look at review production codes. And so you can see here C1, which is a global code. If it was an estimate specific, it would say estimating here. Production control specific, it would say production control here. Um, but you can see C1 is being applied to 303 pieces, 829,795 pounds at 9.94 man hours per ton, whereas everything else in production control is using 8.94 man hours per ton. So you can kind of see how you can get a little bit more specific, which will help you um, when you are actually scheduling. So let's go back over to our schedule I'm going to update that status again it's going to, it would actually change my hours then in order to reflect that new distribution of hours so um, it can really help you hone in a little bit closer you, you can see actually 150 estimated now has gone to 151 I think it was 115 or something like that before so um, it can really help you get more specific and better information onto you onto your schedule over here just by using those production codes to um, uh, really hone in on the specific man hours per ton that is more applicable for per sequence um, so that that should be able to help you there one thing to note there too if you wanted to get, start going down that road with the production code to bring those hours a little bit closer on your schedule you go to production control and company standards one thing to look at on um, import settings is to this use as production codes you can have like the assembly description um, populate the production control or the production code for you which would kind of make sense so then estimating could be using um, those global codes and then those codes if you put those in your detailing standards and had your detailer bring those codes in as the assembly description you can have it populate production code automatically rather than having to do that manually so that would be certainly something to look at as far as doing that with um, you know detailing standards and make, uh, making your life a little bit easier rather than having to manually apply those codes so that brings those, those hours over um, you can see the links between um, pr the schedule and production are working. And um, as work starts getting done in the shop, you would see these percent complete going up as, as, as well. So it's just a seamless flow between the schedule and production, which really is what sets this apart from a Microsoft project or a Primavera or something like any other um, scheduling software this automatically brings in your updates automatically re-estimates your um, your your estimate um, so it just makes it a lot more powerful product so next time we'll talk about bringing in some uh, regular hours um, your actual hours worked as well let me know if you have any questions